All right, welcome back, everybody. We're going to be talking about pressure today, pressure in general, but also pressure with fluids. So here we go. Just a general definition of pressure. Pressure will rise when the applied pressure is intensified or directed over a reduced area. So here's the formula for pressure. We have pressure is equal to force divided by area. Okay, and we can kind of see it here with this example here. Let's say we push on this balloon with uh, a spoon and we push it with the same force with a needle the needle is going to pop it because it's going to apply a lot more pressure and the reason why the needle is going to apply a lot more pressure is because the area that the needle applies the pressure on is super super small and since the area is super super small the pressure is very high it's kind of how you know shots work it's kind of how thumbtacks work, everything like that. Anything that has a very small amount of area, uh, I guess we, we a lot of times call that sharp. But what that means is it can apply a very large amount of pressure with a small amount of force. Okay, uh, so let's move on. Uh, take a look at the diagram on the right. Three cups of different shapes are on a table, each containing different amounts of water. Which container will exert the most amount of force on the table? Okay, so again, pause it whenever you want to try to see if you can do this. But let's do this. Container 1, container 2, container 3, they all exert the same amount. So the answer is going to be container 1. And it should be fairly obvious. I mean, you might have been got confused by the question, but container 1 has the most amount of water. Okay, so since it has the most amount of water, it's going to have the most amount of mass. And since it has the most amount of mass, it's going to have the most amount of the weight slash force of gravity. Okay, moving on. Uh, take a look at the diagram on the right. Three cups of different shapes are on a table, each containing different amounts of water. Which container will exert the most amount of pressure on the table? Let's assume that container 3 has half the amount of water as container 1. Okay, so, okay, so we can look at this and we can see which one is going to exert the most amount of pressure. So pressure is equal to force divided by area. So we should look at two things. One, we should look at force. So which one's going to exert the most amount of force on the table? We kind of did that last time. That's number one. However, the second thing we should be looking at is area. And since it's in the denominator, we should be looking at which one's going to be having the smallest amount of area in contact with the table. And we're going to notice that's number three over here. So since that area is so small, especially in comparison to number one, and it's uh, smaller than number two, but also it has more water than number two. So then we should know that three is going to be the answer over there. Okay, so even though the force is less, it's going to apply more pressure because the area it's uh, it's in it's it's under is going to be uh, a lot smaller. Okay. All right, guys, let's look at this example. We have the same brick lying on the table in two different scenarios, in two different ways. What is true about these two scenarios? Okay, so scenario number one uh, exerts more force and more pressure on the table. Part B, scenario number two exerts more force and more pressure on the table. C, they each exert the same force on the table, but scenario number one exerts more uh, pressure. D, they each exert the same pressure on the table, but scenario number two exerts more force. So first thing we should know is it's the same brick, so they both have the same mass. If they both have the same mass, they're both going to be exerting the same amount of force onto the table, which is just their weight. So that should tell us a lot over here. So it's not going to be A. There's not more force in one thing. Um, it's not. So the only real option here is C. Uh, another thing we should know is, but the scenario number one exerts more pressure. So we should know scenario number one exerts more pressure because we can see the surface area is a lot smaller than the surface area scenario two. Moving on. A box is on a table. The box has a width, length, and height of 0.3 meters. Uh, a second box is on a table that has uh, the same mass, but the width, length, and height of this box is 0.6. How do the pressure exerted on the table differ from each box? So what we should know is since they both have the same amount of mass, what this should tell us is the, the force is going to be the same for both. Okay, They both equal the same amount of force. What the second thing we should know is this smaller box here has a smaller surface area, okay? Uh, half as much actually. 
So we should know that this first box, this smaller box, I'm going to call it the first box, is going to have more pressure. So we should know that right away. Okay, so not going to be A, uh, not going to be B, uh, maybe C, uh, nope, maybe C or E. And you might be saying, okay, so pressure is equal to force divided by area. And you're saying, okay, it seems like the size is around half the amount. So if it's half the amount, shouldn't the pressure be two times as much? And you might be tempted to do C. However, remember area is, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the, the width times the length. Okay, so it's a squared thing. It's a metered squared. So what that's going to mean is it's going to change by a factor of 4. And let's just do a demo of this. Let's say this force here is equal to 10 newtons. Okay. So for scenario number 1, we have the force, which is 10, and the area is going to be 0.3 times 0.3. And scenario number 2, we have 10, and that's going to be divided by the area 0.6 times 0.6. Okay, and the, both of these are equal to the pressure. What we're going to see is it's actually this one here, this first one, is actually going to be equal to four times as much. You can do that on your own if you want, but that's how it's going to be. And that's because the area is something that's squared, okay? Um, meaning that these two are multiplied with each other, 0.3 times 0.3. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, do the calculations if that though was a little bit uh, hard to understand. Okay, moving on. Uh, finally, doing a math problem. A 12 kilogram box is lying on the table. The width of the box is 0.3 meters. The length of the box is 0.4 meters. And the height of the box is uh, 0.5 meters. What pressure does the box exert on the table? So it's a little bit hard to see because um, it's not like 3D. So let me just like kind of like make it 3D here to help us. So what we have here, this width is going to be uh, 0.3. The length of the box over here it's a little deceiving, but that's 0 0.4. And this height here is 0 0.5. Great. What pressure does the box exert? So again, pressure is equal to force divided by area. In this case, the force is going to be the weight of it. So 12 times 10. The area is going to be this width times the length. Okay, because that's how much of it is on the table. The height of it is not on the table. So I'm just going to do 0.3 times 0.4. And now let me put that into the calculator. Divided by 0.3 times 0.4. Put that in parentheses. And we should have around 1,000 pascals. Okay, moving on. Pressure with fluids. Okay, so finally talking a little bit differently here. So maybe we're going to actually watch this with the next video. So next time we're going to be talking about pressure with fluids. So hopefully that was helpful and I hope I'll see you with the next one. Bye.